Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today is kind of an experimental tutorial, but I want to show you guys a little bit more about depth of field. I'm going to go in depth about depth of field because a lot of you guys want to get that really nice blurred background look. So I'm going to kind of show you how to do that today. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. So I'm in a new blender document here. I'm just going to save this as depth. That's fine. All right, so we're going to go ahead and save this as depth. Now, the very first thing I'm going to go ahead and point out is the actual camera. As you guys can see by default, it's kind of sitting here in the corner pointing towards our subject. One of the things to think about when we want to create a nice depth of field effect, there's actually like two main things. One, the actual distance that your camera is from your object. And then two is actually going to be the f-stop. So let's go ahead and go over those things. So firstly, I'm going to snap to my camera using numpad zero. If you don't have a numpad, you can click on this little icon right here on the right and that's going to snap you to your camera. Now that we're snapped to our camera, I'm actually just going to go ahead and take this cube. I'm going to give it just a little bevel, just something nice to look at a few segments. I'm going to right click shade auto smooth. I'm going to just add a little HDRI into our scene here. So I'm going to go to my HDRI folder and I think I'm going to select this one right here. I'm going to go over to my uh, rendered view, switch over to cycles GPU. I'm, uh, with my cube selected, I'm just going to give this a, like a metallic shader so we can kind of see it a little bit better. That's fine right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a plane. I'm going to scale it up. And again, this is just for viewing purposes. I'm going to bring it down below our object here. I'm going to go ahead and click on object, apply scale. I'm going to head over to the shading tab. Now you'll understand why I'm doing all this in a moment. I'm just going to add a new shader to our floor. I'm going to add in a brick texture. Plug that into the base color, click on offset, make that zero. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my scale. I'm going to scale this up a bit. Brick width and height need to be the same. We'll do 0.2 for each. And then for the mortar size, we'll do like 0 0.005. That's fine. And then you're going to go ahead and copy this first color and paste it onto the second. Now, my goal here was to create a grid floor. The reason I'm doing this is to just show you guys the different depth of field effects that we can easily achieve in Blender. Let's hop back into our layout. Now, one of the things about the camera that I love to do, since you see all this extra space outside of this frame, I don't really like that because it gives me a false perception of what is actually going on in our scene here. The only thing the camera sees is within this box. So how do we kind of narrow in on this? Go ahead to your camera settings on the right hand side here, click on viewport display, and then we're going to up this value called pass part out. And as you can see, the background just kind of fades away. I'm going to just, I'm going to bump this value all the way up. The reason I'm doing this is because now I can actually see what is about to render in my scene. I always do this when I'm working on complex projects because I can actually see what the camera sees. Now, how do we enable depth of field? There's actually a button for it. So I'm going to go ahead and check mark this depth of field box. Now you're probably not going to notice much of a difference and that's because we have to adjust these values and we have to decide what is the thing that we're trying to focus on. In our case, it's the cube. Now to make the cube a little bit easier to see, I'm going to give it a slightly blue color here. That looks good. Click back on our camera and now there's this little eyedropper tool under the depth of field um, settings here. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to select my cube. You see when I hover over it, I can select it. I'm going to go ahead and select my cube. And as you can see, nothing's changed. Kenny, you're not teaching me depth of field. Nothing's changed. This value is what you actually need to change to achieve that look. On the, on the right hand side, you're going to see something called f-stop. Now, if anything, if you guys know anything about photography, you know that this is really the setting that matters. So I'm going to hold shift while I hover over this and I'm going to click and drag it. Now, as I start to lower this value, watch what happens. Notice how the background starts to get blurry. And that's because the lower the f-stop is, basically the more you're going to focus in on this object. You can see that we have a nice blurry background right now. Now at the moment, our camera is a 50 millimeter lens. So we have kind of a wide field of view here. A 50 millimeter lens is commonly used in photography. So is the 100 millimeter lens and an 85 millimeter lens. Notice the difference as we zoom in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and get out of my camera view for a second and show you guys a really nice trick. So you can see the camera is kind of sitting right here, right? Now, the camera is quite close to our object, but what happens if we actually change the distance between our object and our camera? This is really the most important thing. A lot of people don't realize this, but the distance between your camera and your object are just as important as the f-stop and your focal length. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and save this project. I'm gonna hop over to the animation tab. And the reason I'm going to do this is because, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. I'm gonna zoom out here. I'm gonna go to my rendered view on the left and I'm gonna actually go ahead and adjust my camera on the right. And this way I can see what's happening on both sides. Now I'm also live streaming this, so if you guys see me moving my camera around, that's why. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Z so that I can kind of see where my camera is in space. And I'm gonna press N on the keyboard to pop open this tab so I can actually adjust these values in real time. Now with my camera selected, if I move my camera back really, really far over here, you'll see now we, now we can't see our, uh, our cube anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hold Shift, raise our Z up until we can start to see our object again. And then I'm gonna even out both of these values to 19 and negative 19. And I'm gonna change my Z rotation to 45. And as you can see, we're focused back on our object again. You'll notice the depth of field is still enabled, right? Now, check this out. If I go ahead and choose a 120 millimeter lens, we're now nice and zoomed in here, right? But you notice the background is still slightly blurred, but what if we wanted that to be even more intense? Go ahead and take your f-stop, try 0.01. Now look at this f-stop. It's so intense that you can't even see your object anymore. So let's go ahead and slowly bump that up and see what results we get. See how you can barely see the lines in the background anymore? This is how you achieve that incredible depth of field effect. Now this is way too intense. And as you can see, we're not actually focused on our object. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to control where my focal point is with an empty. Rather than actually selecting the object I want to focus on, I'm actually going to do this with an empty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on add empty cube. Now, another thing that I wanna point out, and not a lot of people realize this, the actual size of the object that you're focused on is also very important as well. So for example, right now, if I was to select my empty as my focus object, you can see that we kind of have the same result. Now watch what happens when I scale the empty up. I'm gonna go ahead and start scaling this up. You're gonna notice nothing happens, but if I go ahead and click on object apply scale, okay, nothing happened there either. It should have though, that's weird. Let me go ahead and click back on the camera. Select the empty again. Okay, apologies guys, I did actually think that was gonna affect it, but regardless, if we take our empty and we move it, Notice how I can change where the focal point is. Apologies about that false information right there. I actually have seen before that if the object was a different size, it would actually affect the focal length. Or sorry, the actual focal point. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna try to zoom in here on the edge of this cube, and then I'm gonna click on my empty and try to just ever so finely find that perfect point of focus. It's actually quite hard to do. That looks pretty good there. Now at this point, we're kind of focused on the edge of our cube. If we go back to our camera and we adjust our f-stop, we can kind of slowly bring in the focus here. That looks pretty good. And it's also kind of hard to tell because our cube doesn't really have a lot going on with it. So if you really wanted to, you could just add some displacement here. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a displacement modifier. Click on new, go to clouds. And then I'm going to add a subdiv. And I'm not really noticing much. Why? Should. Let's try marble. That is strange. All right. Well, the whole point was I was going here. I'll just do the, I'll just do it manually. <laughs> I'm just going to add some, some bumps to the side here so we can see some details. There we go. This is not good modeling practice so don't do what i'm doing but the goal is to show you guys kind of how to do this how to add some <laughs> some details to this this looks horrible all right there we go oh uh, there we go of course the displacement works now all right let's just pretend this is our object oh my gosh this looks absolutely awful anyway horrible example for the tutorial but you guys get the picture notice how you can kind of see that like what is actually in focus now if you have more objects in your scene it's gonna be a lot easier to tell what's actually in focus. But in this specific case, you can take your camera, you can adjust the distance of the camera from the object, and you can also adjust your f-stop manually here. As you guys can see, I can make the background much more blurred or much more in focus. Now, if you just turn your depth of field off, 
you don't have any depth of field. Now, let me go ahead and show you another example, guys. The grid is the main thing kind of showing the depth of field here because as the grid blurs out in the background, you can really get a sense of depth, right? So sometimes when you make your compositions, it's really helpful to actually have things in your scene, such as multiple objects, to show the sense of scale and depth within your scene. Now, let me go ahead and change my camera lens from perspective to orthographic. Notice the <laughs> drastic difference here, guys. Seriously, look at this. Completely different effect, completely different perspective. Well, it's not perspective anymore, it's orthographic. And look at what we're getting here on the left-hand side. I just wanna go ahead and zoom this in so you guys can see. Look at that depth of field effect. Now, a lot of the times when people are creating these really cool isometric rooms, they're using techniques like this. So if you go ahead and go ahead and shift and click and drag on our f-stop, we can slowly kind of fade in the background here. Now, what's really cool about this is the f-stop has much more of a dramatic effect when you're in this isometric view here, guys. It's really interesting. So again, when we take our empty, I'm gonna go to my top-down view on the right-hand side here. When we take our empty and we move it, we can still get our depth of field to shift. Now, what's really cool is we can actually animate this focal spot just by animating our empty object. But of course, we wanna be focused on our main subject here, so I'm gonna try my best to keep focused right there. But let's say you wanted to focus on the background and then fade your focus into the foreground where your subject is. You could do that by animating this empty, right? There's a lot of really neat tricks you can do with this depth of field. But I wanted to try to go more in depth with it because a lot of people ask me, how do you achieve this amazing depth of field effect? This is how. Um, now, another thing you can do is, of course, you can duplicate this object, scale it down, right? I'm just gonna show you guys a quick example. Let's say this is the object you wanted to focus on. Go ahead, click back on your camera, get rid of the empty, use your eyedropper tool to select that second object. And now if you zoom in here, you can see that we're focused on this object. Now, again, you're gonna get varied results. If I take my empty, scale it down, move it towards where my object is, there you go. Now we can do the same thing here. We can click on our camera, select that empty, and then we can really refine this from our top-down view where exactly we wanna be focused on. Now, if you really, really zoom in here, you can see, see our object. And as I move my empty around, you'll notice how the depth of field completely shifts. This looks like a good spot to focus on here, no pun intended, and that looks fantastic. So again, guys, your actual camera itself, the location of the camera, the distance from the object, sometimes the size of the object, all of these things factor into the results you're going to get. Um, now again, if we click on our camera and we lower this value to like 0.2, you'll notice that we're really still kind of focused on the general area of where this object is. But if we take the empty end our object, bring it, bring it somewhere else, look at this. Look how we can now narrow in on our object. Look at this GZ to bring it up. See how everything changes as you, as you change the um, location. So if we were to put this on generally the same area as our other object, now we're focused on both. But if we bring this over into the background, right, like back here, now we can kind of see our front object, but it's so blurred out because we're so focused on that empty and where the other object is that it doesn't really even matter anymore. And this is how you get these incredibly crazy, intense depth of field effects. Um, not a lot of people go over this kind of stuff because I think a lot of people find it boring, but this is kind of how you can elevate your stuff. If you're really trying to create this intense, blurred background effect, this is how you do it. Um, and again, we should move this around to our liking. That looks good. It's just fun to play with. Isn't it, guys? I don't know. I enjoy this stuff. Now, let's say you, you really want to focus on this back object, right? I'm just going to show you a really quick example of how to animate this. Let's say you're really happy with the way this looks. I'm going to go ahead and insert a keyframe on this empty, right? Insert location, right? And then I'm going to jump over to frame, how about frame 60, okay? And then I'm going to change my location to the front object, maybe like the very, very center or top of the front object. I'm gonna insert a keyframe. Now let's go ahead and watch what happens if we play this back. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this so you guys can see this. Play this back. Notice how we have a focal shift. We're focused on this. First we were focused on our, our object behind and now our empty moves to the front and we're now focused on this object right here. That is how you create 
what is called a, I believe it's called a focus racking effect. You start focused on the back object and then we're moving our focus towards the front here. Pretty cool stuff. Um, now again, this is a really intense depth of field. Normally you wouldn't see this. If you guys are trying to replicate a real world example of um, background blur, go ahead and look up some real camera settings, some real f-stops and focal lengths. Right now, we're not really using anything realistic. An orthographic camera, I don't even think that exists in real life, so I'm gonna switch back to a perspective camera. Notice the difference, we still have the depth of field, it's just not as intense. Now, when we switch back to the perspective camera, we actually need to change our f-stop down to something quite lower to achieve that effect again. As you guys can see, we do still have that depth of field effect. And it's pretty cool. It's fun to mess around with this. Um, right now we're at 120 millimeter focal length, which is definitely not unrealistic. I used to use, I think it was a 100 millimeter lens. Um, 85 is another common one, and then of course 50. And look how everything kind of changes as we go. Now let's say we're using a 50 millimeter lens. See how, how much the whole entire scene changes? You, you can actually still see the edge of the plane there, which is probably not what you want for this. But if you guys are looking to get that microscopic city effect, this is another way to achieve that. And this is just so much fun to mess around with. As you guys can see, the geometry looks horrible, but you guys get the idea. So I just wanted to go over this quick example of kind of how to mess with the depth of field. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. I just wanted to show you guys how to achieve that background blur effect and kind of how to get that really intense blur depth of field effect that a lot of people are using in their animations. Um, it's not too hard to do. You just have to mess with the settings. It's really, a lot of this stuff is about experimentation. You have to mess with this stuff yourself. There is no one size fits all, so don't think that there is. You have to mess around with it. Every scene is different. The scale is gonna be different for every scene as well. For example, if you scaled that object way, way, way down and zoomed really far in with a really intense lens, um, like a really, really far zoomed in focal length, you're gonna get a completely different effect. So mess around with it, guys. Let me know what kind of cool effects you can come up with using this technique. Again, that depth of field option is so powerful. No one's, no one's using it to their advantage, I don't think. I mean, I've seen it used in some realistic renders, but not a lot of people are using it in the way that I would hope to see. So I'm curious to see what you guys come up with. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you understand depth of field a little bit more now. Um, I'd be curious to see if this helped you guys out. So have a great day. Consider subscribing and I will see you in the next tutorial.